Hello, it's Peter Craig from Users Innovate again. Uh, this video is fantastic because this is the culmination of all your work so far in your user innovation project. By now you have been through a lot. You have been uh, having a kickoff workshop where you have defined what the problem is all about and what the project is all about. You have done some desk research where you have identified, you know, uh, the needs and the trends related to the problem that you have uh, that you that you have uh, set out to investigate, and you have found uh, via your desk research some key opinion leaders, some experts, some some potential candidates for your uh, for your lead user workshop, and you have then done some field research where you have done a lot of work on. And, uh, interviewing and contacting and phoning again and uh, having meetings with potential candidates and what you have found was uh, to to amp up the results that you have found so far you have found some even better persons and some even better solutions and you're really nailed uh, the needs uh, in your in your field research and now you have a, a list of fantastic persons candidates who already have found some fantastic solutions to the entire problem that you have or a part, uh, a part of the problem so you have some clusters of of lead user candidates and you have talked to them and and they are so interested and thrilling and uh, just awaiting your invitation for the lead user workshop so that is what we're going to talk about today. It's so fantastic. Probably right now you have a, a slide deck where each person that you have selected uh, after your interviews and so on in your team, uh, some, some clusters of persons, you know, uh, in this category or in this group, we have person A, B, C, uh, you know, with a link to the profile, LinkedIn or whatever it is, uh, some personal data on uh, or contact data, uh, the the a review of why this person is so so interesting, uh, and and all the relevant information which is valuable uh, prior to inviting the person, but also uh, for the facilitator when when doing uh, the actual lead user workshop. So that's where you are right now, and now you want to do the lead user workshop. Uh, to do a lead user workshop is actually not that difficult, uh, especially. If you have a, a background as a, as a facilitator and a coach uh, and uh, you are uh, used to making user innovation projects or innovation projects in general, I would say, uh, then you are used to having these kind of, of uh, situations or workshops. Uh, but the beauty here is that what you will have is not a typical you know, a forum group or something like that. No, these, this is a unique workshop one or more workshops where you where persons uh, a few in the world who already have a solution in your target market in your analog market uh, 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 or some analog markets i should say and you invite them in and and that's where magic will happen so this is something really really special so um what we should do what we should talk about today let's get started what we should talk about today is what is the purpose of your uh, lead user workshop or lead user workshops, I should say. Uh, well, um, the outcome is typically, uh, or I should say always, uh, some kind of a superior new uh, concept uh, or concepts uh, for an entire solution or partial solutions. Uh, typically it's wrapped up in one or two or three alternative directions or it might be so that you have nailed it and it's just one one concept that you are making with all kinds of features and benefits and so on. And that is that is the outcome here because the starting point for your workshop is that there is each uh, each person has a separate solution or a partial solution or is an expert uh, and when they are you know being able to work with each other in the, at the workshop together with your team in from your organization then there would that, that's where things are happening so it uh, it might be new concepts for a new uh, breakthrough product or it might be a new service or it might be a new process um, the next thing that I want to share with you about uh, making a lead user workshop is that um, who should be in it and, and how many should be in it. Well, um, what we say is uh, ideally it's about five to eight, nine persons uh, because that's a, that's, a, that's a group that you can handle uh, of external persons and then you can uh, add some internal persons as well. So five to uh, twelve persons. Uh, we have actually made lead user studies where, or workshops uh, only with two persons, 
brilliant ones. Then we added with some expert and some some internal guys, but there were only two true lead users who had each a very different solution, and then it was still a fantastic workshop. And we have had 15 different uh, lead users uh, participating uh, uh, in, a, in a workshop as well. Uh, how long does a lead user workshop take, uh, or the, the duration of the lead user workshop, how long is it? Well, we say one to three days, uh, sometimes it's four days. Uh, I would say most typically uh, when we do it, it's uh, in our experience, then it's uh, in a weekend, uh, for instance a Saturday or a Sunday. Uh, it's typically one full day, so they come in the evening, the night before, Friday evening, and then uh, they will start early, for instance at 8 or 8.30 in the morning, and then they'll have a full day of a workshop, for instance to 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, full speed, fully dedicated, uh, it will be a blast uh, and then they go away to fly home uh, 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 in the end of, of, of that one day. That is possible. We always say if we do it in one day that there is a high likelihood that you need to invite uh, for another workshop if you really didn't get through it because sometimes uh, new questions are generated at, at one lead user workshop but uh, it differs a lot. But most, that, that's my main recommendation, to take it in one day, highly intensive. Uh, it also depends on uh, what work will there be up to and after. Uh, as mentioned, we very often combine the lead user uh, mythology and uh, the lead user workshop with uh, a platform where people, they can communicate with each other. Simple, simple stuff, not a fancy one. And that helps a lot uh, sometimes. Um, then we write here that you should be aware of uh, who you invite and how many you invite from your internal organization. Because sometimes we experience that that the organizer uh, or the, the, the key stakeholder here, the sponsor of the project, uh, wishes to, to invite uh, you know, key stakeholders and, uh, and those who really are important, the bosses in the organization. And that's not really what we are looking for here because this will be a workshop with hard work and, and you have to develop some new concepts and so on and then it's not really uh, the time to sh make a show off for the bosses. You might make an out brief, you know, just before lunch or perhaps even better in the end of the day uh, where you spend half an hour just uh, briefing uh, the bosses what it is all about. Sometimes we do it, most often we don't. Uh, uh, where we actually use the bosses uh, a lot is uh, to to uh, to start the workshop, uh, where you know a big boss comes in, uh, says hello, says who is this and uh, how big he is and all that, and how much uh, he, on behalf of the organization, uh, is uh, thrilled that this uh, workshop can happen and that uh, that there is a commitment from the organization side to really work with the stuff that will be developed this day. That will be a perfect start for your lead user workshop. Uh, so here, don't invite the bosses, uh, they should have no role. Sometimes there are, there are some observers and so on, uh, they should really be careful about you know, how they are participating or not participating, because it actually can hinder uh, development. Uh, I would say from internal people versus external people, maximum one-to-one, -one, so, so don't overcrowd the workshop with uh, internal people. And those who should participate from the internal side, apart from the core team should be people who can contribute to the development of these new concepts. So it might be an internal technical expert, it might be an industrial designer or a prototyping guy. Oh, they, they're wonderful because then they hear something and then say, make something and then, is this what you're talking about? And that typically, you know, brings big applauses to the to the room so that's that's fantastic so think carefully about who you invite uh, and also prep them in the right way to to uh, to what their role is and uh, also you know functional fixedness as we have talked about and uninvented here syndrome um, we have a couple of time had lead user workshops where we had the internal guys uh, in another room from the conference room where uh, the lead user workshop actually was and there were videos so so those internal guys could see what was happening and uh, they're not just sitting and watching a video uh, no they're when they're hearing what uh, people are working on and so on and so on then uh, they uh, develop and draw and discuss uh, in their own room 
uh, what it is and then uh, you know whenever possible uh, the, the, the solutions or the findings and the conclusions that this internal team has made in one room is being brought to the facilitator in the lead user workshop room and uh, that will be presented is that what we are talking about here and so on and so on so so in a sense this is a, this is a psychological uh, trick that you have someone else to as a third party to view and then work with this and then they reflect and put the reflections back into the group that is working on something. Uh, we have not had problems with it, it's just an alternative approach to it. Um, what we then also should talk about here is uh, the place. I mean the, the, the actual stuff. Uh, so the place you should have, to, of course, it depends on where are people coming from. You know where, where they're coming from. Uh, it's a fixed group, right? Uh, so it should be easy for them to, to get there. Uh, you know, uh, a conference center close to an international uh, airport uh, would be fantastic. Um, don't, uh, they shouldn't have too much uh, travel time and so on. It should be easy to get to the airport. Uh, easy to uh, get through traffic and so on and so on and uh, sometimes we have had some some funny stories about you know that it should be a nice place and so on and so on I just uh, talked to uh, a client uh, about a lead user workshop in uh, Colorado in uh, Boulder Colorado and uh, and they said oh it's uh, such a nice place we have uh, uh, that we're thinking of we could have the the lead user workshop with you know a nice mountain view and so on and and that sounds fantastic, but you know what? People, they will be in the conference room all day, and so, so you think about what they're going to do and then uh, act accordingly here, right? Common sense again, but common sense is not always common practice. So, as I mentioned, uh, typically it's uh, one full, full day. It can easily be done in two full days and so on. It all depends on how deep you want to get into it. Uh, what you should have is a plenum room and then uh, some group rooms or some areas where the groups can be. Um, you should count for three to five persons in, in groups. Um, and why do you have groups? Well, uh, it is so that uh, after the introduction and people getting to know each other and so on, uh, then there will be uh, people will be. Uh, has to go into a group uh, to do group work and in the morning it's typically where we uh, group them uh, according to their clusters so for instance in the bicycle um, uh, the minimizing theft of bicycles case uh, there is a tracking group and in the track so tracking devices or tracking solutions uh, and in so so those uh, people with different solutions uh, each very different solution but within this cluster uh, then they are working on something it could also be purely need related that it's uh, you know for handicapped people uh, doing shaving or, or whatever it might be uh, and then you cluster them here and the solutions relevant to 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 this um, to this cluster and then in the afternoon uh, then they go in group work uh, work on making final concepts, and then they go back in the, in plenum, and there will be a you know a plenum session where you uh, where everyone then can reflect on what uh, the different groups have worked on. Then there's lunch, and then after lunch there will be new groups uh, potentially, uh, typically I would say new groups where new uh, constellations of people uh, are put together. Uh, typically at this point we will see that there are some things which are you can tick off uh, on your list uh, some concepts have been made on something but there are some outstanding issues and so on and then you make a new cluster so in the in the in the lunch break the facilitator or facilitators they will be busy uh, so that's why you need group rooms and uh, or group uh, 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 group work areas and for each uh, group there should be you know flip charts and pens and uh, post-it notes and so on and so on the normal uh, routine with making brainstormings and so on um, then the next thing that I would like to talk to you about by the way here I should mention that we will um, we'll support you with a, a typical agenda for uh, a lead user workshop uh, how it might look uh, but of course in each and every uh, situation we customize the the agenda according to what is it all about and uh, what's the desired outcome and so on and of course you should do the same so take it as inspiration okay 
Um, so what is it we are talking about here? Um, first of all, um, you should uh, you should make a, a, a trick which is really really helpful and which really will help uh, amp up the 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 the, the work uh, during the day. Uh, apart from this trick with uh, the the big boss coming in and saying, "Oh, we decide what you are working on, so this is really valuable for us." But you might also start the day by saying, uh, in the introduction round, where people uh, are uh, asked to introduce themselves, uh, you know, spend two to three minutes on telling about yourself and so on. Uh, what when one person then has. Uh, talked about himself so uh, hi I'm uh, I'm Todd and I'm uh, working in NASA and I'm an ultrasonic expert and uh, I have worked a lot with how to get uh, ultrasonic vibrations uh, through solid uh, materials and uh, thereby uh, changing some consistency uh, in, a, in, a, in a material under this this is from a one project that we have uh, and then when Todd is over with this uh, three minutes, then uh, you as the facilitator, or even better, the one who has had the actual contact from the core team uh, with Todd will say, you know what, why we have invited Todd? It is because he has found as the only one in this category, in this world, in this technical field, he's the only one who really has found the trick for how to doing uh, this in a cost-efficient way and, and still achieving fantastic results with the changing consistency uh, of a material uh, where you do ultrasonic vibration through a rock or whatever it might be. And, and uh, so, and you, if you do that with everyone part if participating, uh, then they will see, wow, this is really a fantastic group as it is, right? So that will really um, help them understand that this is not a focus group. This is not, you know, when, uh, uh, an area where they can just, you know, uh, relax and so on, where they really uh, can 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 work together because there are some 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 power in the room. And the other uh, recommendation I have to you is um, that uh, very often it is so that uh, there has to be some kind of a non, uh, a non disclosure agreement or something like that, a secrecy agreement. And, and uh, when when the participants come, they should be fully aware of all of everything. You know, the text has, should have been sent to them in beforehand, and so on, and so on. Uh, but what you also should do is, uh, if there is a compensation, then you should definitely. Uh, say upfront or before the meeting that uh, a check, for instance, will be handed out. Uh, it will be made in, in beforehand, but will be made and handed out after the workshop. You know, when when we have said uh, goodbye to each other, then people get the check in their hand and so on, because that will help them stay the full day. Because otherwise, very often we hear that, oh, my flight is leaving uh, one hour earlier than blah 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 blah. And that's not really how it works, right? So that's uh, that's helping to do that. Uh, by the way, uh, compensation is uh, is uh, is a tricky uh, thing. Uh, we have touched upon it before, but what I would like to say here is that that uh, it helps a lot if everyone has is getting the same compensation because there will be whispering and they will talk to each other even though they don't know each other so if it at all is possible then ensure that there is the same compensation for everyone uh, and uh, that you say that uh, at the start of the day when you set the scene that uh, this uh, this will be you know uh, uh, everyone is equal, so even though you have, you know, doctors as well as nurses in your uh, lead user workshop, then uh, everyone is equal that particular day. Um, yips. And then the final recommendation that I have to you is to uh, ensure uh, documentation. And for us, documentation it is not enough just to have a, a camera as I have here, uh, but uh, really have someone who in, might be a secretary, an intern, a trainee or something like that, who's really dedicated to uh, document what is said, not only what is written, uh, when there is this uh, plenum uh, feedback from group work and so on, uh, this is very important. Um, and um, and also take pictures uh, during the day if if it is okay with the participants because it's always uh, nice and fun and helpful and it helps a lot to tell the story about 
what has been done here uh, when you do this. So ensure that you get your documentation uh, right and uh, I always recommend that docu documentation is happening on the spot by one person uh, if not, then do it immediately after the uh, the, the workshop. Uh, not wait till next morning and something like that, because then something will be lost already, even though you're extremely tired as a facilitator. Uh, this is basic stuff. Where things uh, might become complicated is uh, in the actual setting of the lead user workshop, um, where you have to figure out so who is really going to be together with who, and, and what can we expect uh, from the profiles and so on. Uh, in reality, it's all about you know being a good facilitator, uh, setting the, the stage also in the beginning, say, well, if we are in doubt, it is okay not to agree with each other, but if we are in, in, in doubt, then it is uh, the facilitator or the, the sponsor of the, of the show who is uh, taking a decision in order for, for the group to be able to move on and so on. And also, of course, in the beginning, say that we will uh, get through some periods where, we'll, where there will be some frustration uh, or uncertainty where are we going where are we heading with this and so on uh, but it also uh, is fun and so on so so that's a natural part of the brainstorming and and this creative activity uh, that will happen here um, that's uh, basically everything that uh, is to be said uh, in general terms about a lead user workshop. They are so different. We have never had a lead user workshop which was, which was uh, dull or which was, was not bringing fantastic results. So don't be afraid of it. Uh, I mean, it, your starting point is that there already are a number of solutions, right? Uh, and it is all about bringing people together and, and getting the right context and so on. I think uh, the, the biggest challenge is to manage people especially internal people, uh, and really let the uh, true experts, uh, those who have found their own solutions, uh, let them get to work and uh, enable them to, to really do something. So uh, good luck with it, have fun with it, it is fun. So have fun, be passionate and make a difference with your lead user workshop. Thank you very much.